Julius Caesar is one of the oldest commanders in Rise of Kingdoms, and most players feel like he's kind of... How do I put this nicely? Uh, he kind of sucks, okay? People feel like he kind of sucks, especially in Season of Conquest and in the late game. But what if I told you that there was kind of a secret power to Julius Caesar and there might be one little fun use for him? And that's what we're going to go over today in this video. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Now, you already know that about 69% of you guys are not subscribed. So go ahead and consider doing that and dropping a thumbs up on the video. But also, if you didn't know, I have a Twitch and I play games other than Rise of Kingdoms over there. For example, yesterday, I played World of Warcraft for three and a half hours. Very proud of that, by the way. So follow me on Twitch with the link in the description and join my Discord if you want to be notified the next time that I go live. Okay, so what are we talking about in this video? Why are we talking about Julius Caesar in 2024? And the reason for that is very simple. The meta in Rise of Kingdoms has kind of been solved for months now. I feel like players are starting to get a little bit, it's a little bit stale, right? Okay, we already see that the new commanders have landed inside Rise of Kingdoms. We have Gajamata, we have Gonzalo, and we have Lapu Lapu, okay? And by the way, Lapu Lapu is gonna be coming into the game as a Mightiest Governor Commander 56 days after the most recent Mightiest Governor. So this actually is a very fast commander release window luckily as we've talked about on the channel before all three of these commanders are basically garbage so you don't have to worry about them unless you've spent five or six figures on the game in which case do whatever you want you can probably get great trades with these but because this commander release is like kind of a nothing burger like people kind of already knew going into it that oh it's engineering oh it's a city defense commander like oh we don't really care about that that means the meta hasn't really changed and i feel like the meta has been pretty much set in stone ever since herman prime was announced like we knew he was going to be meta before he even really came into the game we knew like weeks before right so it's been since probably the beginning of december that the meta has done anything which has been a couple of months and we're gonna have to wait even longer until the next commander release cycle after this one so some players might be a little bit bored okay they might not have anything to work on the meta is pretty much solved and so today we're going to talk about something that's a little bit off meta something that's not necessarily you know if you ask people they're not going to say that julius caesar is the meta and i'm just going to say it right up front in this video he's not meta okay what does meta mean well it's short for meta game or some people like to say that it stands for most effective tactics available okay those are two separate things entirely actually i'm not going to go into either of those definitions but basically regardless of how you define it caesar's not meta in season of conquest so what can you do with julius caesar in the season of conquest well the answer comes from his active skill giving you a really powerful buff for five seconds now in the past we've been able to kind of exploit this really long buff with commanders like genghis khan and then even beyond that with commanders like zhang yu but the newest kid on the block is huo and what do these three commanders have in common well they have a reduced rage requirement for their active skill so for the first 15 seconds of battle the dragon of the desert skill on huo gives him 150 less rage requirement which means he casts his active skill at 850 rage which means he's going to cast it before the enemy and you're going to start that rage engine really really quickly so what does this have to do with julius caesar well let's take a quick look at this battle report as an example and then we're going to talk about some pairs that you might be able to defeat in a duel in the open field with huo and caesar yes you heard that correct stay tuned to later in the video but opening up the battle log we're going to see that if you have the rage requirement in effect which only happens if you've already been in a fight in the open field or you wait 30 seconds okay remember keep that in mind it's very important for huo if we open this up we will see that the first time we cast our active skill was on turn eight okay so that's a little bit faster than usual and i just want to preface this by saying i didn't have the horn of fury on this pairing so it actually could be faster if you have the horn of fury and you get those procs with the extra rage but of course huo is the primary and caesar's the secondary so on turn 10 is the first time that caesar casts his active skill which means for the next five seconds the huo caesar army is going to have 20 percent attack 20 percent defense and 30 percent more all damage okay and we see that that starts on turn 11 so that lasts for five turns so turn 11 so one two three four five on the final turn of this bonus you see that huo casts his active skill again 
this is really interesting and here i can kind of prove it here because we've got the indomitable army effect this gives you the 30 percent all damage okay and also later on in this turn we see general of agile cavalry was cast during the 30 percent all damage buff window that's pretty cool right this is a really powerful single target damage factor and you're getting 30 percent all damage on top of this massive single target nuke which is awesome okay what happens next well of course on turn 17 is when we're going to cast the active skill from caesar again which means you're going to have it on turn 18 19 20 21 oh and on 22 would you look at that it happens again there is an overlap between the 30 percent all damage and the active skill from huo so you can really abuse the reduction in rage cost and a little bit of the rage engine built into the skill talent tree on huo to give you two instances where you have 30 percent all damage for this massive nuke on huo but what if i told you that it doesn't actually end there because you don't actually have 30 percent all damage for those active skills you actually have 50 percent all damage for those active skills because you have the double relic or you could if i unlocked it you would have the double relic on julius caesar which gives you 20 percent all damage and 20 percent march speed which is insane we're going to talk about that in a second so of course for the first active skill you only have the 20 percent all damage bonus from the museum relic but then the second and the third cast you'll have 50 percent all damage both from the active skill on caesar and also on the museum relic unfortunately after that depending on if you have the horn of fury and things like that if you get lucky with feral nature for example there is a chance that you will miss the timing after that point or getting the overlap with the active skill on huo but how often are you going to stay in a battle to cast four five six active skills on the same target the answer is not that often right a lot of times in the open field you're going to be hitting a target you might cast a few active skills and then you typically will retreat because that player is probably retreating back into their you know into their murder ball right so a lot of times you won't even have a super long engagement with the same target so the fact that it might not line up perfectly for the fourth fifth and sixth active skill for example isn't that big of a deal because you're going to get it for two of the ones that matter the most and the best part about this is that players are going to see a huo in the open fields right huo is the primary nobody's going to know that you're running the caesar secondary so if you're a player who maybe doesn't have a great pairing for your huo at this point maybe you're in between uh you know investing in commanders maybe you could throw your caesar behind your huo depending on what his skill levels are and you could actually have a really interesting commander pairing now remember i said earlier this is not meta but this is a fun little thing you could play around with and the crazy part about this is remember caesar has 20 percent universal march speed on his museum relic which means your huo caesar is actually faster in the open field than huo with william okay literally faster william gives you 15 percent march speed you get 20 percent on caesar you literally are faster with huo caesar and also if you look at joan of arc prime for example she only gives you 20 percent march speed and then 10 more if you're outside of your alliance territory which a lot of the times you will be so you do get 20 percent with joan which is the same as you get for caesar so your huo joan is as fast as huo caesar or if you're on your own territory huo caesar is actually faster than huo joan right so you actually are a really fast cavalry march with the huo caesar and you have this fun little strategy that you can play around with and you might be saying okay omniarch that's that's great but like there's no stats on julius caesar right well that's actually not really true because the active skill here gives you 20 percent attack and 20 percent defense for five seconds and if you're going to be casting your active skills every eight seconds for example then five out of those eight seconds you're going to be having this up all the time right remember caesar first casts on turn 10 so then you have the 20 percent attack and defense for 11 12 13 14 15 and then you don't have any stats for 16 or 17 but then you have it again for the next five after that so for the first couple of skill cycles you're actually going to have it for five out of seven turns and then after that if you you know again if you have the horn of fury maybe this would change things but let's just say it's five out of eight turns you're going to have those stats well five out of eight turns having 20 percent attack and 20 percent defense is kind of like having 12 and a half percent attack and 12 and a half percent for defense that's kind of like an oversimplification right the reality is that five of the turns you'll have 20 and 20 and then for three of the turns you'll have zero zero but you can kind of average it out as about 12 and a half percent of attack and defense for those turns and 18.75 percent all damage all the time on top of the fact that you're going to get 20 percent all damage from his relic 
so it's kind of like 38.75 percent all damage all the time that's kind of good right now of course it's not meta right and I'm, I'm not making the claim that this is meta there are plenty of commanders in the game right now that have more than 12 and a half percent and 12 and a half percent what is that 25 percent of stats we see on we see on juge leong for example he has 30 percent health so he literally has more stats for a stat that you care more about same thing like if we go over to liu che he has 20 percent defense and he has 20 percent attack so literally more stats right even with huo huo has 35 percent defense when he's expertise he also has 40 percent attack so a lot of the meta commanders do have more than 25 percent of just raw stats so caesar even though you know he does have something there um he it's still on the lower end i'm not trying to make the claim that it's not but remember he has a ton of all damage you don't see that on literally any other meta commander right Th on average let's call it 38.75 percent all damage all the time that's insane okay that is actually insane and the fact that you're gonna have 50 percent all damage for the single target nukes on huo is really cool and the final thing i'd like to touch on here is the fourth skill on caesar gives you 15 percent more troop capacity so you are literally bringing more troops to the battlefield instead of 230,000 troops it would be 260,000 troops or however the math breaks down depending on your vip level but the reason that troop capacity is so important is because troop capacity is literally correlated directly with how much damage you're doing with normal attacks counter attacks and skill damage on huo so having more troops in the battlefield means you're going to be dealing more damage to the enemy, right? This troop capacity, it's important to realize the importance of this troop capacity. So I got curious. I figured, okay, let's pull this into the rock battle simulator and see how Huo actually performs in 1v1 duels. Now I know some people don't love test results, but we've been using the rock battle simulator for the past seven or eight months here on the channel. And it's been pretty accurate with predicting the actual open field meta after some bugs were worked out. And also with understanding what this actually is, it's a 1v1 duel simulator, which doesn't tell you if a commander is good or not of course right some commanders are good at dueling and some are good at aoe damage and you're just not really going to know that if you're using just the simulator but my point is that the rock battle simulator is in the most accurate position it's ever been in and it's been pretty accurate for the entire time that we've been using it so let's see how huo caesar goes up against a nevsky joan and of course you can see the talent builds that i'm using on both the sides here you could see that the uh, equipment is the same on both sides here okay so let's take a look at these reports here and the huo caesar actually wins wins the first battle report with 41.6k troops remaining the second report shows let's see 45.1k remaining for the huo caesar another win let's take a look at the third report 27.6k remaining the huo caesar wins again the fourth report is pretty even the huo caesar barely wins here with 7.9k remaining remember huo caesar is also bringing more troops to the battlefield so for example in the first report and also in the second report we're seeing that the sev wounds are higher for the nevsky joan uh, on the third report we see they're pretty close but still higher for the nevsky joan and then on the fourth report even though huo wins they actually have more sev wounds than the than the nevsky joan so i would call this one even right i would say it's pretty even technically it's a little bit negative because there's more sev wounds on the huo caesar side okay let's move on to the next report and we see the huo caesar wins again 26.2k remaining sev wounds were pretty close now look is this a blowout victory no but we're using julius caesar guys we're using julius caesar against a meta open field army now Nevsky Joan has the double cast of the AOE on Joan of Arc Prime, which is not reflected here. And again, I'm not trying to say that the simulation result is like the end all be all case closed. This is a better army than that one. Of course not. Right. Of course, there's lots that doesn't get pulled into this, uh, into this formula, but Nevsky Joan do be losing though. They do be losing though, which is, it has to count for a little bit of something here. Okay. Next, I decided to put Huo Caesar up against Zhuge Liang with Herman Prime. And you can see the talent tree down here. You could see the equipment off on the right as well. First report, Huo Caesar wins with 56K remaining. Also note that there are more sev wounds on the losing side as well. Taking a look at the next report, we see it's actually the Huo Caesar survives, but takes more sev wounds. Okay. So we'll call that a loss. Let's see what the next report says. We've got 75.9K remaining for the Huo Caesar. We've got 21.7K to 32K on the sev wound side there. Let's take a look at the next one. We have 67.8K remaining for the Huo Caesar, uh, wins the sev wound trade. And also here we see the Huo Caesar loses the sev wound trade, but still survives against the Zhuge Liang with 
Herman. So, okay. I mean, we see it defeats them every single time, but doesn't necessarily always win the Sevun trade. Okay. I mean, for a commander that came out in 2018, I would say that's pretty good. Next, I put it up against CPO Liu Che. And as you expect, it gets destroyed. The Huo Caesar can't do anything to the CPO Liu Che. It's kind of crazy. Uh, it gets destroyed. I think Scipio Liuche right now is the best pair in the game, like in the open field for sure. That's my opinion. But um, yeah, this is cavalry going up against infantry. As you know, infantry counters cavalry anyway. So we're talking about the best pair in the game going up against this. I think it makes sense that it would lose, but it's important to actually show that data. Next, I tested against Huo Joan, just out of curiosity, right? Because some people use Huo Joan. I think that's a fair play. I think that's a good strategy. And you could see that, of course, it there's a little bit remaining left here, but it did lose. I mean, it loses the Sevun trade. It's got more troops and it's still lost. So, okay, let's take a look at the next report. We see it loses again here. Let's see the third report. It big loses here. We see the fourth report, big loss, fifth report also pretty big loss here from a Sevun trade okay so Huo Joan is better than Huo Caesar in every way which is great and Huo Joan also has the AoE we would expect that then I put it up against another infantry march Gorgo and Liu Che and as you would expect the Gorgo and Liu Che absolutely destroys it as we saw with the Scipio Liu Che I think infantry just completely pops Huo Liu Che is just so strong and then Gorgo is a great pair for him it, it makes sense so okay we've got three pairs in a row that it loses to two of which are infantry one of which was Huo Joan then I thought what about Guan Scipio okay and as we go through here you're going to notice that it does lose most of these fights okay it wins the second one here it lost the first one it wins the second one uh this one it loses once again and we see this one it loses once again and this one it wins so it's it's a slight loss against Guan CPO. I would say it's about 50 50 but I think the Guan CPO is a little bit better than the Huo Caesar okay so I mean people still use Guan CPO. I think that's a really fair open field March to use I've used it in my recent KVK it still pops off anyone who says otherwise is insane so then I started to get worried because I'm like okay well actually Huo Caesar seems to be losing to a lot of things it beats Nevsky Joan and it beats Juge Leong with Herman but what if it loses everything else well here I decided to do Boudica Juge Leong because Boudica typically is really good at dueling right especially in the simulator you see really good results and it's losing to Huo Caesar okay you can see the talent tree in the bottom right corner here we did the six piece uh all legendary talented everything you'll see on the second report the Huo Caesar actually loses on the third report the Huo Caesar wins again and on the fourth report we see the Huo Caesar wins again and on the fifth report we see the Huo Caesar wins except it's so close that actually it loses the Sevun trade so it wins four of the five duels it wins the Sevun trade three out of the five times so okay we see Huo Caesar I would say that is a slight victory for Huo Caesar over the Boudicca with Zhuye Liang. And then the final army that I put Huo Caesar up against is Huo William and why is this well this is usually what people run with Huo. People usually put William as the secondary. And we can see here from the first battle report that the Huo Caesar actually wins. Let's take a look at the second report. We see the Huo Caesar survives, but loses the Sevun trade. The Huo Caesar wins the third report. The Huo Caesar loses the fourth report and the Huo Caesar wins the fifth report. So I would say three out of the five there were wins for the Huo Caesar, a majority where the Huo Caesar wins. So, okay, I think you guys get the point. The Huo Caesar combo is actually usable, but it's not meta. And I think that this is more so an army that you could use if you're looking to plug something behind your Huo just as just something to run, just to fill out your five army lineup potentially if you're in between investing in commanders. And you could try it and see if it performs well for you. If it doesn't, of course, don't use it. That just makes sense. Maybe throw in some tier four units into that army. So that way you don't take a massive hospital bill if it's not going to perform as well as you hope. But the point of this video is to show you that you actually can sometimes get good use out of these old legendary commanders and specifically if you were to run this combination in like a C or D seed kingdom, I think you actually might be surprised how well you could potentially do right you even have some tankiness on the second skill here and especially under 60 percent units remaining so what i want you guys to take away from this video is that there are commander pairs that you could try outside of the meta and i'm not here to convince you to you know start using off meta pairs just 
because i mean look it's an rpg okay it's a pvp strategy game and i think that players will always use the best possible commander commander pairs of course i'm always going to use that as well especially in a game where people can literally spend money to have more troops right and so if, if money is basically on the line here then of course you're going to use the best possible strategy always right but at the end of the day it's also a video game and video games are supposed to be fun that is the number one point of a game of course some players find fun in winning and of, co of course you do right but also i think it's sometimes cool to test out different marches and different strategies just to see what kind of results you could possibly get is huo with caesar the best meta combo absolutely not is it a pairing that you could try if you wanted to have a little bit of fun i think you could and especially because it's going to be a lot faster on the open field from a march speed perspective than most other armies will be you'll be actually kind of shocked so the key takeaway here is remember to have fun in your video games especially when the meta feels a little bit stale for just a little bit too long guys if you made it to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below your thoughts on julius caesar have you used him to any effect in the open field in season of Conquest, I would love to hear some other interesting pairs that you might have for Julius Caesar. And don't forget that my Twitch and my Discord links are going to be in the description below if you don't want to miss me go live with games other than Rise of Kingdoms. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.